Crossroads Media. I did not see that coming. Welcome on into Sports Talk with Broads, everybody. My, microfa- my, my, my microphone stand broke, so I have to hold it. Ugly viewing experience, I'd imagine. Just like the Eagles and what the hell just happened in Indianapolis because I have no words to describe that mess. I thought offensively they were piss poor. I don't know what the game plan was from Shane Steichen and Nick Sirianni. I'm seeing heavy 12 per- personnel I'm seeing heavy 13 personnel in the first half not heavy 13 as if they did it a billion times my point is where's AJ Brown on the field you're already down Dallas Goddard why are some of these tight ends being flown into the field and it almost felt like they were trying to catch Jeff Saturday and the Colts off guard by putting in some of these sets but I'm like what are you doing I didn't think Jalen Hurts saw the field very well to the point where he's he's handing the ball off to the running back when he probably shouldn't have. It was a mess. Jonathan Gannon and the defense was sensational. That was ridiculous what Sue did, what Joseph did, just getting plucked off the street and having such a big impact. And this is why I kind of laughed when there were a lot of individuals out there claiming that Washington put so much film available to the public to see how teams can run. I'm sorry, but I hate to break it to you. This league, the National Football League, where people study film more than they spend time with their loved ones, they didn't need Ron Rivera and the commanders to show you any weaknesses in the Eagles. Trust me, there's been plenty. You go back to Houston. You go back to Detroit. There were plenty of moments moments where teams saw a hole in the Eagles defense it wasn't the commanders and to Gannon's credit after that first drive which sucked because there were some third down conversions and you wondered if it would look the same way again from that point on they were pretty much shut down the three points that the Colts got at the end of the first half that was because your special teams blow you get a false start before the punt you punt the football and after that You allow a big run to happen where it's actually a nice return and that sets them up for an opportunity to put more points on the board. So what do you know? Your special teams hurt you. Your offensive game plan was brutal. Some things just didn't make sense. So when they were down 7-0, they kicked the three-point field goal, which I didn't hate necessarily, but it was fourth and four. Maybe in other scenarios when you're feeling yourself a bit, you go for it and keep your offense on the field. I don't have an issue with getting points. I really don't. Where the logic is flawed for me is when it was fourth and 10 and they went for it, when it reeked like desperation. I don't know how fourth and four you kick it, fourth and 10 you think let me put my offense out there and hope something can happen and by the way Jalen Hurts doesn't even let a bomb go downfield which I thought would make the most sense because you you never know what can happen instead you you do literally nothing with it I thought the logic was flawed there how about when Hurts with the strip that happens when Yannick Ngakwe is going up against Miles Sanders. There needs to be an internal clock. I could have heard it wrong. Maybe the broadcast didn't say this, but I'm pretty damn sure I heard the broadcast mention that Miles Sanders needs to hold his block more. On Yannick? In what world was that ever going to be something where you'd have time? You're not going to have time. It's just for maybe a half of a second. You're begging and and asking for maybe .2 more seconds to get the football out of your hands. you got to recognize that that's the possible matchup and you got to do a better job there but the ball ends up falling out of his hands there and the Colts make a play but the Eagles defense were holding the field goals non-stop and I know the Colts are kicking themselves in the in the face because they're thinking about the one field goal that they missed but that's what you do to the Eagles credit if you're going to force them to kick a billion field goals you're not going to bat a thousand you're not going to get them all it's just not going to happen So because of the way their defense stayed strong, they stayed at a third and short. Way, way, way better circumstances. Third and long, third and 11, third and eight, getting off the field, forcing some punts. It was great. And the two newcomers were awesome. And and I was pretty upset when Josiah Scott got beat. It was that 31-yard play, super late in the game. You thought, there it is. And I'm pretty sure right before that, Darius Slay 
couldn't make the play on a third down, so you're aggravated. But Hassan Reddick, when needed. Brandon Graham, when needed. Timely. Timely. And look, they forced a fumble on JT, on Jonathan Taylor. And Taylor mowed you down early on. After that first drive, he was non-existent. I'm so proud of the way Jalen Hurts stepped up in that fourth quarter, used his legs before the Quez Watkins touchdown. He had that awesome 20-plus yard scramble. The fourth and two, where he was keeping it himself when the C parted and he ran it in for the touchdown. That's big ball stuff. That's the, I could put everything that I did poorly away. The team needs me right now. We're going to go win a damn football game. You had a short week because you played on Monday night. You're going on the road. You're down double digits in the fourth quarter. We got this. So there's plenty of things to analyze. And and look, with Dallas Goddard being gone, yes, we thought the offense would be impacted by that. There's a difference between being impacted and then going from, I'm destroying teams to three points. When they had three points throughout a long period of time, that's totally unacceptable. I know Dallas Goddard is great, and he's one of the best tight ends in football. I don't even know if he gets enough national attention for how strong he is when you relate him to some of these other tight ends in the league. With that said, you can't let it kill you to the level that it killed you. There's no excuses for that. He had so many penalties. You went through the sequence of a Kelsey penalty, a Landon Dickerson penalty. Who else was after that? Was it Tyree Jackson? I know the tight ends were getting penalties. You had a first and 35. (laughs) And the weird part about that is, back to Jalen Hurts' struggles in the first half, they actually got to a position where they could have kicked a field goal, but he took a sack on third down, which kicked them out of field goal territory. Not that I'm in love with kicking field goals. I don't think you win that way. Quite frankly, you don't. But after being first and 35, you could salvage a drive by picking up three points. Especially at that time. It was crazy, though. It really was. Uh, Yeah, the first and 35. Kelsey with the high snap. I don't get why they were living and dying with Boston Scott on those runs in the fourth quarter. Boston Scott, that's what we're going up to the dish with? You're telling me you're either striking out or hitting a home run with Boston Scott? I don't understand. You could even debate the way they use that final two-minute warning by running a play beforehand. I don't know. There's a lot there. A.J. Brown not being on the field. At the same time, A.J. Brown fumbling the football as soon as the defense got you some energy. 